Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of modification on the lathe because I want to basically fit a digital vernier caliper to the tailstock of the lathe just that way it's going to make when I'm doing any drilling procedure a lot more accurate. So to do that we're going to have to modify the tailstock and also we're going to have to modify this digital vernier caliper. So let's take a look now at what we're going to have to do to get this to fit and then we're going to start doing some machining. Hope you enjoy this video guys and I hope it helps you out with your mini lathes if you're thinking about doing a similar modification. Right, so I've taken my tailstock off my lathe just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So what my plan is, is to get this caliper and fit it somewhere onto this bit here and also it's going to have to attach onto the quill. So what my plan is, is to probably have it about there and then coming out to like a collar on the end of the quill here, which it will secure onto. But at the minute it's way too long, so what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to cut the end of these calipers down just to make them really customised for this quill. So I think that's what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to quickly cut this down. I might just show you me doing that just to show you how simple it is. And then we'll come back when we can actually sit this on there fairly flat. Right then, my caliper's all cut down and that was a really simple thing to do. I just chopped off the caliper end which you'd normally use because I won't be needing that and I just chopped it at 140mm which gives me plenty of room to manoeuvre. So the next thing we need to do with these is somehow mount this on here now. So what I'm thinking is bolting this part up here. So that part will be bolted to the actual tailstock itself. And then, like I said before, I'm going to have to make a little collar that goes on the end of the quill here, which that will then attach to. So then, when I wind the quill in, this will slide in with it. And when I wind it out, it should, in theory, move out with it. So yeah, that's the plan. All that's left to do now is start machining. <laughs> So I'm going to start off just by facing off the material. Just because there's a little bit of run out. Right, so we have a nice machined flat surface on there now. I can begin to turn down our stock. So I need this ring to be 10 mil thick, but I'm probably gonna turn down about 14 mils worth. Just when I come to part it off at the end, it's gonna make this process really easy. And just for reference, I need the final outer diameter to be 39 mil. And this is, this is 51 millimeters of stock, so. Got a fair bit to turn down. So I'm taking 0.5 millimeter cuts, which is taking off one mil of the overall diameter. And the finish on this aluminium is really, really nice. Super shiny, like almost like a pot polished finish. So really happy about how that's looking at the minute. So we're getting a really nice finish now on this and if I've measured it right, which hopefully I have, this should now be 40mm which should leave us 1mm left to take off. 40.3, so that, that's pretty good. So I'm now going to take off the last mil 
really handy having a DRO when you do projects like this. So I'm taking off 0.5 on one side, which double that for the diameter, and this is one. So this final cut will be taking this down Be lovely that so hopefully if I measured that right so that is 39.1 millimeters so for what what for what we need that is spot on so the next thing to do now is we need to put a hole in the middle and then slowly start to bore that out to 25 millimeters so I'm just going to start off by center drilling this just to make sure everything is dead center and every procedure I do after this is okay. Right, with that drilled central, I'm now just gonna go up in stages until I get to the biggest drill bit I've got. And I'm not actually sure what that is. So I'm going to come back when I've got this fully drilled out and then the last thing we'll have to do will be to bore it out. So it turns out I actually had the right size drill bit to drill this out to 25mm so it will slide over my quill. All that's left to do now is I'm just going to add a little generous chamfer on this inner edge here and then I'm going to part off 10 mils worth so it can slide over the quill. So let's get on with that. So now I've got a chamfer on there, I'm just going to part it off and I'll come back to you once we've got our ring all sorted. Right, the collar is all done and I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Great finish and most importantly, it's a really good fit over there. So what I need to do now, is I now need to secure this onto my tailstock, and I also need to secure this onto the quill so it's not gonna move. So what my plan here is to do, is to put two grub screws, probably one about here and one down here, to hold that onto the quill. And then I'm just gonna have to drill and tap some holes, probably one about there and one about there, so this side's gonna be bolted to the tailstock and this side's gonna be bolted to our collar which is securely attached to the quill. So that's the next thing to do. It's not a massive job now, so most of the work was making this collar up and now hopefully we're just left with the easy bits of just drilling and tapping a few holes. So I'll show you a little bit on that, but I'm not gonna go too much detail because this part's a really simple bit um, I might just show you how to drill and tap this safely, but other than that, drilling and tapping this is just like drilling and tapping anything that you've probably done before. So I'm going to get on with this and then I'll come back when we've got to drill out the block and show you exactly how to do that. So let me just give you a catch up of where I've got to. So I've got the ring mounted on the quill now and I've got my hole drilled into the vernier caliper. 
You might notice that this vernier caliper is different to the one I had in the previous video, and that's because I tried drilling out the old vernier caliper and the jaws were hard and steel, and it was so hard to drill through, it just kept blunting my drill bits. So I found this cheap one on Amazon. This is made from a carbon composite, so it makes it really easy to drill through, and it's gonna give me exactly the same result. So at the end of the video, I'll stick a link in the description, and if you're thinking about doing this modification, I would definitely advise going with one of these carbon composite ones just because the hardened steel is so hard to drill through and you're not really getting any benefit of it being hardened steel. So this is now all attached onto my quill. The only thing left to do now is attach it onto my actual tailstock itself. So I'm just going to separate this now and I'll show you exactly how we take the quill apart and we're going to drill and tap this out with the quill removed just so we don't do any damage. So I've already marked up the hole where I need to drill. So I'm just gonna undo these grub screws. So these are three mil grub screws. And with that undone, that just slides off nicely. And you can see my mark on the cast there now. So cast is fairly easy to drill through. So we won't have to worry about that. But what we will have to worry is about getting this quill out. So. Under the bottom here, there's like a gib screw with a lock nut on it. If you undo that gib screw, you might have to undo the nut first, I'm not too sure. Oh no, it's fairly loose. So undo that, take that out. And now with that removed, you should be able to wind your quill all the way out. It might turn a little bit. Hold, hold it still, make, make it easier. So with that all the way out, it should just slide out. So that's what your quill looks like if you've um, never seen it out before. And that gib screw that you got just locates in there and it basically just stops that turning. So that's that out. So next thing we need to do now is we need to machine down in there. So I've marked a hole there I need to drill this out to an M4. So I'm just gonna stick that on my pillar drill, drill that out to a three mil, and then tap it to an M4. Right, I've got these one, two, three blocks just under my tailstock, just cause there's a little lump in the tailstock and it's not sitting quite flat on the bed of my pillar drill. So I'm just gonna drill all the way through there now with a three mil. And then once we're done, I'll clean up the inside of the bore and tap that to an M4. It looks like we're all the way through. So just using a hand tap, I'm tapping this out now to an M4. So I think I'm gonna get this all cleaned up now and bolt it back together and on the lathe. And then I'm gonna come back and show you it all in finished action. Right then, our tailstock DRO, in a sense, is all mounted on. Really happy of how this turned out. And just a quick idea, just to show you how it works. So what you can do now is before you start drilling or any other procedure that will require this, you can zero it here, sets it back to zero. And then as you wind in, as you can see here, the scale goes up and it just gives a much more accurate result when you're doing any drilling on the lathe. And it just makes it really easy to see how deep you've actually drilled in. So if I was to stop that now, I'm at 39.7 mil deep. So that is a really good way and a really cheap way of getting a digital DRO in a sense on your tailstock. So that's all for today, folks. I hope you found this upgrade slash modification useful and maybe it's something you'll consider. If you have found this video useful, please subscribe and maybe just drop a comment below if there's any other modifications you want to see me run through on the lathe. But for now, that's all.
Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.